What's up, team? You've got Jovian and Songers doing a cast for the Sticky Flames Masters Tournament. This is game number two between Bio Ice, or better known as Boyce, <laughs> as we like to call him, spawning as the Red Zerg in the bottom left-hand corner of Entomb Valley. And, and is... cross spawn is VIP, the Blue Protoss, looking to claw back into the series. We saw Bio Ice take game number one um, after a very long macro game, uh, got to that destructive uh, Broodlord army and it massive infestors so many infestors and uh, just was unstoppable. As you said, a thousand infestors. A thousand infestors many, actually yeah. broke the supply cap somehow. <laughs> it was a thousand out of 200. <laughs> but yeah, that was a very long macro game so, you know, these players have had time to feel each other out now. They've played it together for about, you know, half an hour. So now they know each other's styles. We'll see if anything strange happens in this game. Will VIP go for maybe another two base all in, which failed miserably in the first uh, first match they had. And he was kind of forced into that two base player because his third just kept getting sniped. So um, it'd be interesting to see how he plays if he does go to a third uh, Nexus tech. Um, but. Um, really, we saw some beautiful War Prism play out of him, so... Yeah. I'd be a lot that we missed. Uh, well, yeah, we didn't actually see it. We just <laughs> knew it happened. So, um, but it'll be interesting to see if he still goes for a Colossus-less build, mm -hmm. um, or if uh, he does go into that Colossus tech, maybe... Um, uh, maybe he starts going DTs earlier with some harass. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of VIP. What I really want to learn from VIP right now is how he's supposed to get this wall off. I always mess up my wall off on Two Valley. Um, it's, it's either I don't really get the ramp, or I kind of wall off this ma uh, this natural uh, fully, and then it's really hard to get out. So I'm going to learn from this a little bit. But meanwhile, back at the strike base, we do see a pretty typical spawning pool timing. So VIP knows there's no uh, temple or six pool or something cheesy like that happening right now. So he's going to be pretty happy to grab that next first. Yeah. And uh, just as I expected, he's probably going to put a pylon in that corner because you would need uh, two pylons to block off this size ramp. So uh, that first pylon was just there to uh, at least get his forge down, and the second pylon will be there to finish off his gate in a cybernetics for later on. Okay, so Overlord, right, again, getting into position to scout out any tech later around the 6 or 7 minute mark when Protoss usually chooses their tech. Um, and Zerg players, he's probably going to be trying to go for that early third again over here, even though it is a little annoying because of this uh, destructible rock. Right yeah, there. and those poor Zerglings do little to no damage on that armored rock, so it will be a while before that ever gets it's broken like down. chipping your teeth on a rock, like tooth on a rock. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> and we have a drone. I would know. I would know. <laughs> we have a drone coming in, deciding that those warped-in buildings are just too scary to go near, and uh, pulls back. Um, I guess he saw everything he needs to see, just a typical wall in, and doesn't need to go any further than that. Although it would have been nice to go into the base and see um, the gas timing, maybe even get that drone in just to cause havoc in that base and and make the fear of a proxy hatch. Yeah, you know, proxy hatches are very scary. But now the uh, Protoss is going to go scout the third third base, and the Zerg does want to take it. How those things are going to prevent it? And I don't think he knows. He did see the drone in pursuit. He didn't see it get built, but I think he's safe to assume. He just really wants to save that probe uh, from all those Zerglings, and unfortunately, um, didn't get it. Imagine some mind games uh, Biowise could play here, which is be even canceling the hatch and go for that two base all in. Oh, that would be clever crazy. girl. Very clever. I guess we'll see uh, how it pans out. We do see four Zerglings moving across the map, uh, activating the Zelnaga for just a split second, and uh, moving into uh, maybe poke at the ramp or maybe just sit outside, wait to see what the Protoss is doing. It looks like they are going to be sitting outside, or not. <laughs> no. Nope. So they're coming up. The cannon's not going to shot off. Poke. It's one shot. Thank goodness he didn't get two. I'd like to see him send one Zergling over to that third, just to keep that um, peace of mind, knowing when that third goes down. But looks like the Overlord's got that job covered right now. He's making his way into the Protoss base. Right now, just some probes being made. Uh, no plus one weapon started just yet, even though Protoss does have the gas for it. So maybe there's not going to... Oh, um, I don't know what the hell I'm talking Speak about. The devil. Is getting that uh, that Zelda to move across the map, um, or where did it go? Oh, it just found some Zelda oh, lanes that yep. was chasing him for a second. Decided to continue chasing, and we do see VIP might be going for a fast third. Looks like he's going to try to get a wall off there, um, and this Zealot just wants to run with the wolves, <laughs> wants to be part of the pack and being left behind. He's like, hey guys, guys, I want to go with you, I want to be part of your clan. But no, the Zerglings are not having anything of it. They are racist. They do not like <laughs> other races. 
And so they're going to go back home and to tell their friends that the Protoss player is going for that quick third base off of one gateway, just one gateway. Yeah, and luckily for the Zerg, um, those El or those Zerglings didn't have to go all the way back. He knows immediately just by sight of the map. Oh, and here comes that Zerg. Like, hey, he's so now he's all upset that they left them, and bo both parties are dancing a little bit. I feel like that Zerg could do a lot of damage, but maybe he just wants to regen his shields and um, ensure kills rather than uh, ensure death. Overlord was just taking down the Protoss base, not actually scouting anything. Because no tech has gone down for a Protoss player yet, although that uh, because he is going for that Nexus first. Um, wall off is complete at the third base, and now Pro is trying to break down that rock so he can transfer probes over easily. Yeah, and the Roach Warren is almost done for our Zerg player, so um, would have been nice to have this a little bit earlier to put some pressure. But now we're going to see a three base uh, um, Protoss versus a four base Zerg, and three base Protoss is um, very strong economy. Should be able to um, produce a pretty sizable army. So. I'm not sure if it was in uh, BioOasis' a favor to actually give him um, this open invitation to build the third without any army to stop that. That's right. It was actually it's very easy for Protoss to get to that third base. And as a Zerg player, you never want Protoss to be on three bases because that's when you have enough gas. You get those six geysers coming in. You can get that uh, Colossus tech. You can get that Blink tech. You can get that High Templar tech. It's just, uh, it's just bad news for a Zerg player. Yeah, and at the same time, we see our Zerg player getting heavy on the tech trees, getting massive upgrades, massive droning, um, really not worrying too much about army. I think he just wants to get as high on his tech tree as he possibly can before he starts producing an army that he wants. Mm -hmm. Now we see the Zerg player up at 61 drones compared to the Protoss 52. So the Protoss player is actually still staying pretty close to uh, the ability of a 3 base Zerg to produce drones. But right now, uh, we see at the front, we see a couple of links. Could just be trying to poke up this ramp, knowing that they can't make it around, but they might get a free stalker kill here. Yeah, a nice surround on that stalker oh. will end. Oh, and he tries to pull into the corner to get those sentries to uh, block them in. Bioice knew what was up and decided not to go in there. So we saw VIP opt for a full wall in at the third, just so that he can open up that um, natural. Um, uh, the rocks near the natural, but unfortunately, no wait, never mind. He didn't uh, wall off incorrectly, so he's totally fine. He's uh, got a nice defendable base here. Now you can start macroing up an army. Mm -hmm. uh, plus one armor getting researched as well. Probably not going for that early uh, attack weapon just because the Twilight Council was a little delayed. Uh, so he's now on his four bases and pretty happy. He's got his infestation, pit down, pathogen clans, and VIP is able to scout this fourth base with this um, observer there. Yeah, and Protoss does get a full sight on this fourth base, so knows that it exists. Even decides to send in an army, a warped-in army, to put some pressure on this. He might, if with some good force fields, he could really um, even out these armies quite nicely. Oh, nice whiffed on those force fields a little bit. Didn't get anybody caught up. But here comes the real army. Now with those force fields already oh, no. created choke. Does block off most of those drones, even though that's not really what you wanted to block off. But it does stop the stop does stop the surround. Gets all of the army dead. Now Zerg only really has uh, the 12 roaches he's warping in and this drone counter. Um, we see VIP doing some great micro with his units just to keep them back far enough. This was actually probably VIP's plan all along because this pylon was put down here very early on in the game. So, you know, making a pylon and he made another pylon. He's just leapfrogging his way over to the Zerg's fourth base. And now we see workers. Okay, well, <laughs> Zerg still has more, Not but yet. there has been seven workers killed and he has forced a lot of roaches now, uh, transitioning himself into a Colossus tech. Yeah, and we see a Spire going down for our Zerg player, um, which is uh, obviously very late in the game, but wants to wants to transition into some sort of uh, air battle. Um, uh, wants to get those Broodlords, or want to want to start destroying this uh, Protoss army, which is so powerful on these three bases. Definitely, Zerg's going for that Broodlord tech, even getting that fifth base up right now. Now, this Zerg army is in the middle of the map, has most of the map control. What I would like to see is a bit more creep spread from our Zerg player. Hasn't really connected his fourth base and his third base yet, and these rocks still haven't gone down, so all his work is taking a long way around. Uh, Protoss right now, though, is turtling on this uh, three base economy, getting blink, getting plus two attack, getting some Colossus out, and also setting up just Prosopons all over the map. Yeah, good map awareness, and we do see our Zerg player coming up for looking for that fourth base, which does not exist, and our, our Protoss player getting the Colossus range, getting some Colossus up now. Um, we should see a timing. How many Colossus do you think before he moves out? 
Um, he's probably going to be wanting to push out with at least three Colossus. That's a really good number of Colossus to do quite a lot of splash damage on any kind of brown army the Zerg can muster up. But um, grabbing a very sneaky fourth Nexus up here in the corner. This is the thing about this map. It's, it's starting to get split in half. And we see uh, some Corruptors coming out by Bio Ice and his Greater Spire. So he's gearing up to get those Broodlords. There might be a, a silly timing window where um, VIP might push and Bio Ice might turn all his Corruptors into Broodlords preemptively um, and then lose that advantage over the Corruptors. So we'll see what actually happens. In the last game between these two, uh, VIP got no Colossus, so Bio Ice just turned all his Corruptors immediately into Broodlords. So this might be interesting. This might... Um, throw a wrench in Bioice's plan. Mm -hmm. With these extra pylons sitting around the map, very easy to harass these bases down here. We see the a pretty nice mixture of units coming out from Bioice here. Got a lot of investment with pretty much full energy, some roaches, some lings, and just two lonely corruptors, which probably won't do that much against this Colossus push here. And now we see after two Colossus decides to push out, both armies know about each other. Uh, they have scouted each other, and it looks like VIP wants to put some pressure on the weak side, but this Relatively quick army for Bioice um, wants to flank, no wants to take control of the Zanaga Tower. Now they totally see each other. They both know exactly what they're going up against. Uh, Bioice might want to pull back and buy some time for those brutes. The thing is, I don't think he has enough money to be transforming, or not enough supply. There's been too much supply in these brooches and links, and he doesn't want that right now. He wants pure Broodlord Infester. Oh. But this attack is coming up. Brooches and links are going to swing around the back. Infestors are probably going to be putting the army hit, but a good blink coming up from VIP. Yeah, that blink was just to get away from those fungals, I believe, but those Colossus just raining death upon that Zerg army. Lots of infested Terrans coming in. That was a whole platoon of Terran units once, and they're going to do a lot of DPS on this uh, Protoss army. He just blinks away, decides to fight another day. And with those Broodlords in that army, I don't think these Stalkers can do enough. They yep. can't blink underneath, and they're just not going to DPS but, enough. But wait, look, the buffer units from uh, Zerg are actually losing, like, dying now. So Protoss might be able to have a chance, but he's just going to retreat and with those colossus down why not make them all brood lords and interestingly enough we see our protoss on five bases and our zerg only on four seeing as uh -oh. how his fourth was and oh on un unfortunate misstep by bioice leaves his units unattended and that blink under kills all those heavy tech strong units those brood lords those infestors he needed them so badly in those the next all the brood lords have actually died and now it's just wings but and uh Links and some investors with no energy against some Stalker Zealots, which are very nicely upgraded at 2-2. These Links only at 1-1. And it looks like uh, VIP just turned this game around. Yeah, that one misstep, leaving your units unattended, and then that, that so Stalker's taking beautiful advantage, jumping in like ninjas and just sniping all those Broodlords. And we see VIP with his famous patented uh, War Prism play. He's going to do some real good damage with this. If he can, uh, he's not keeping the main army distracted anymore, but it's so out of position that this is going to do some major damage. Oh, Warp in. Oh, nine Zealots. Two, two Zealots going in. And they're... And... Bioice quickly... Huh. I'm not sure. I guess he's lost just too much. He did lose his fourth. He did lose his fifth. He had not scouted any of the Protoss base, and he only assumed that Protoss was just getting stronger and stronger. Um, incredible turnaround by VIP to even the series 1-1 in this best of, I'm going to say, three. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'll come back at you with game number three next.